I'd like to introduce our newest sponsor, Swim Angelfish. Swim Angelfish is an online certification program that strengthens your teaching curriculum to serve swimmers of all abilities. Swim Angelfish will prepare you and your instructors with the skills to teach swimmers with autism, physical disabilities, anxiety, sensory and motor conditions, and more. Learn to teach skills faster and with more comfort with Swim Angelfish. Apply for an only alpha pool product scholarship and receive up to 50% off your certification. Go to swimangelfish.com today to apply. Looking to host your first swim meet or replacing an old timing system? Run a swim meet with ease from your laptop using Superior Swim Timing. You can use Superior Swim Timing with your existing equipment, or they can provide you with a complete timing solution, including deck harnesses, buttons, and starter. SST is fully compatible with HiTech and Team Unify, as well as Colorado, Dactronics, and Amiga touchpads. Go to superiorswimtiming.com to learn more and be sure to tell them I sent you. All right, here we go. My good friend, Fernando Pocenti. Welcome to the podcast, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to, to talk to you, not personally as 2019, but in, the, in your podcast. Well, uh, listen, um, I think it's about time somebody shines a light on the work that you're doing, man. Um, just coming off a gold medal performance with uh, Anna Marcella. Uh, who who took down the 10k open water at the Tokyo Olympics? So uh, listen, second time in Brazil's swimming history that uh, they won a gold medal. So congratulations! Thank you. Thanks a lot. It's nice to to talk with someone who inspires us. Like uh, our first gold medal in history in Brazil was with you and Cesar. I mean, uh, definitely we we start to believe that it's possible. I work with the completely other side, you know, 53 and I work with 10 Ks. It's like completely other side of the, the swimming. But yeah, we we were really prepared for that. I mean, she was she was in the, in the best moment of uh, her career, even even being 29 years old. I mean, she arrived with the mental strength, very, very, you know, prepared for for competing that level. Well, I want to I want to really dig into this because it's fascinating. I mean, not many people fully understand that, you know, when we talk about swimming uh, at this level, you know, we mentioned Katie Ledecky, we mentioned, you know, people who have been very dominant, but Anna Marcel has been as dominant as any woman in the pool uh, over the past 10 years from world championships to world cups to Olympic games. Uh, I mean, she's had just an incredible run, really. Yeah, we, we, I, I love to, to be consistent, you know, in in the in our in our discipline because I think it's the the challenge part of open water. It's to it's really to be consistent, to be in the podium all the time because everything changes in open water. I mean, you mm. you, you change. Uh, salty water to in the sea to 
normal water in a lake or with current with waves mm -hmm. wind we we, we have a different athletes we have a a pack of 70 girls in world champs and now you go to olympics with just 25 girls in a pack um so there's a lot of things that change the result of the race so be there for for 10 years it's uh it's it's really our goal and uh it, it's it's kind of funny because fina start to 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 do that uh you know fina award in 2010 Mm -hmm. uh, for athletes in 2014 for coaches and uh, Fina Gala Dina or whatever. And uh, the funny thing is, if you look to Ana Marcela from 2010 to 2021, we don't have it in 2020 because of pandemic. We we all know she won seven times in, in 10 years. So wow. the best female swimmer, marathon swimmer in the world. It's like, it's, it's really, it's really cool. I mean, it's really amazing. And we put that as a goal, you know. We one of the things that we we talked before the race. It's like I want I want to be in that uh, event again. I, I want you to to win it again. So there's only one way to win it again. It's winning Olympics. So why not? Let's do it. Incredible. Yeah. Well, that's just amazing. That type of consistency. I want to talk about how you got it because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are interested in figuring out consistency just for their athletes but also there's probably some open water athletes that are listening to this that are like how is this girl so good for so long but um i will say um you're, you're dealing with i think your fifth language here i mean you obviously brazilian who speaks portuguese but uh, your english is very good but you you speak multiple languages as well right yeah english is my fourth language so i i, I really have problems to find you know some good words to say what i what i want to express right that uh well first is portuguese then spanish uh, at school then french because uh, i was married with a french woman my kids speak french with their mom so i need to understand so i speak more french than english at, at home when they come in the weekend for <laughs> to stay with me it's like homework in french it's <laughs> it's really hard so well, I, I'll, I'll do my best. I'll do my best with with English, but um, oh, you're doing a great yeah, job. I, I I like to. I also understand Italian. I don't speak very well, but I understand eighty percent of Italian. So it's it's nice to understand the strategies. Some sometimes coaches are talking about strategies, and you can understand all <laughs> languages in the in the in the calling room. You know, it's 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 a good thing. <laughs> That's true. I hadn't thought of that. Um, how, how did this, uh, how did this combination, this team form, when did, when did it start between you and Anna Marcella and why did you decide to get into open water? Well, since 2009, when, um, oh, earlier than this, 2005, when I moved to a club in Sao Paulo and the, the director of that club was one of the first coaches of open water in Brazil. And, uh, he said, here in this club, we, we work with both at the same time. So pool and open water. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that it's possible. We, we are seeing that with the, the, the guys racing. You see Florian, a uh, bronze medal in, in 1500 and gold medal in open water. So Gregorio Paltrinieri, you, I, I can give you a lot of examples. Even Haley, uh, Haley Anderson, mm -hmm. very good times in, in the trials, in the pool and uh, amazing open water. So... I started in 2005, and but not professionally, like with the with the juniors, with the age group uh, team, and then in 2009 to 2011, I started to, to get good results with those juniors. So they they start to move to the senior team, and uh, um, I have a girl competing with Anna, and not in the same level, but uh, you know, it's a 15 year 15 year old girl competing with Anna and arriving like five to six seconds behind her. So Anna starts to realize or starts to look at my job. And uh, in 2000, 2011, she didn't qualify to London. Uh, she was 11 um, in the world, in world champs in Shanghai. And then 2012, start to, to look for a, a, a different program or a different coach. And we, we start to talk in 2012 uh, during the season. And in January 2013, we start to work together. Well, that's it. That's the start of the magic right there. How, how did you know that you had the the patience for this? Yeah, I, I coach sprinters, so I need something that's moving quick, you know, fast. 
I don't know if I would have the patience to be able to sit there for hours on, on end and watch these workouts. How did you know that this was uh, something that you could handle? You know, I, I really admire those swimmers, uh, those long distance swimmers. How how can how can you know keep that pace for that long? How they they know exactly how to do it? So I start to study about them because I really admire them. I was not a good swimmer. I, I was a swimmer here in Brazil. I was Brazilian champion, South American champion, but not more than this. And uh, I was a sprinter. I, I used to compete 100, 200. It's too much to me sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I I know how to do it and I know how to sprint myself as a swimmer. But it, I I admire you know the the way that the long distance swimmers coach themselves in in, in the training sessions and um, well start with the admiration and and then um, when when I was um, in my first competition of open water and I saw that it's not only swimming. I mean, this is the point. It's not only swimming. You have to have your own strategy. You have to know where where to sprint, when to sprint. Um, what, what is the way that your opponent like to swim? You know, uh, where you're gonna be in the where you're gonna be in the pack. So it's so many things in the race that um, start to be as a addiction. You know, it's a it's a passion. It's really a passion to. To, stu to study the race, how the race change. And this is one of, I, I don't know if, if, if I can take your questions mm -hmm. uh, and, and continue with the answer, but it, this is the, the main point of uh, our consistency. We cannot do the same thing, you know, next year or next season. If you keep doing the same thing, they will know how you, to, how you swim, where you be in the pack, how you sprint, the way you swim, you know, it, you, you need to change every single season the way you build your program. And this is this is amazing in open water. If you if you look races, especially girls' races before Rio 2016, we won like three, four races consecutive in World Cups, swimming until the last 50s on the feet of the other athletes, and then doing a 50 meter sprint, and that's it. That mm. it was the it was the, the best strategy of mm. 2014, for example, in World Cup when she won the World Cup. But then Sharon arrived in Rio and just go away of the pack and just won the race. Like, okay, I'm I'm gonna do it. The last three Ks very strong, and people I, I saw the girls swimming. I was not coaching Anna at that moment, but I, I saw the race and see people saying, "Oh, she's gonna die. She's gonna die. It's not gonna work." And then she won. And then she just mm. coaches look to the strategy of the race, and then they start to sprint early. The Italians they used to they used to to do five k's very slow, very smooth in the end of the pack, and then they go to the front. They realize that if someone goes, you know, before them and just want to go out of the pack, they will not see what is happening, so they they will be beaten. So it's 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 nice to to change the way we build our program for to to have a better strategy for the next race. So it sounds like there is some risk involved in your strategy going into a race because you may have a certain strategy that you think okay this is this is going to be a winning strategy today. One of your opponents competitors may have something completely different and it's like you're taken by surprise. So I think that's what you're trying to get at is that because you've had this consistency, you don't want to become predictable. You want to say, okay, we did it this way once. Now we're going to try it this way. But that also incorporates some risk on your behalf as well too, right? Exactly. And, and this is this is the point where it, I heard a lot of people saying that open water is about experience. And it is. It is. You have to compete more and more and more. Of course, if you do that in the pool, you, you will find, you know, as Bruno in, in 53, like – how many times she he, he did the 21 in 53 and a lot of times but he he's finding you know yep. some points that he can improve it's the same thing in open water you have to compete a lot you have to gain more experience to be able to put your strategy in front of your opponents but in the same time you have to compete with them to understand how they like to swim mm. so we study every single you know competitor 
uh, when we, we receive the starting list, it's like one by one. Okay. We know that Ashley, Ashley Tichwell uh, no, uh, like to swim in front. Mm -hmm. So probably because she has an amazing technique in the pool, 1554, I believe in 1500. Right. It's like more than 30 seconds less than, than Anna Marcella. But, uh, you know, there's a cost of that, a cost of energy, a cost of the, the high frequency of strokes. So let's use that for us. So let's study another uh, another competitor, Sharon. Sharon will attack you in the last 500 meters because she did that once and she she had that perception that is the point that she she can win. So mm -hmm. let's prepare ourselves for that. Right. So we study each each athlete. This is this is something that you just find in open water. It's You've had a lot of success at the World Championships, but the, but they seem to be 25k, and then the Olympic distance is 10k. Why is there a difference between the World Championships and the Olympics? You know, you, you know, right? We never prepare ourselves for the 25s. We never in 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 the program. I, I can send you my 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 whole program since 2013. I have all of them. We never prepare ourselves for the 25s. We always prepare ourselves for the 10ks, and she won. Silver medal in Barcelona, bronze medal in Kazan, uh, bronze medal again in Budapest, and then in Guangzhou, we 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 made a wrong strategy and she was fifth. But we always prepare ourselves for the 10Ks. The 25s goes because of her mental strength. It's like uh, it's it's not as um, it's not like in in France, for example. We have Axel Raymond. The it's a it's a guy. Won two times, two times I believe, or three times the, the world champs in 25Ks also. But he prepared himself for the 25s. If you look to the program, you, you, you can see that. We, we prepare ourselves for the 10Ks, and then we use her mental strength to, to do a better strategy on the 25s. She arrived exhausted. She, she doesn't look like exhausted, but she arrived 25s exhausted because we are prepared for the 10 it's the medal that uh, Anna, Anna won 12 medals in, in World Champs, but never a, a, a medal in Olympics. So we were focused in the, in that medal. We were focused on the 10Ks. How long does the 10K take to swim fully? It's It could be one hour 50 and two, two hours 10. It depends on the conditions. Okay. But um, in Olympics, it's funny because it was the, the first time uh, the women's race was under two hours, was one hour 59. So again, uh, no current in the, in the sea. Um, the girls swimming in a, in a high, in a high uh, frequency, in a high speed. So that's why it's under two hours, but it's around two hours. Do they ever wear wetsuits in the 10K? Yeah. Is it always just a, a swimsuit? It depends on the temperature of the water. Nowadays, the FINA rule says that under 18 degrees, uh, wetsuits are uh, compulsory. And right. that between 18 to 20, they say, oh, it's, um, you, you can choose, but mm -hmm. it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't happen. I mean, it's, if you can choose, of course, they're going to put it because it's a, it's a different swimming. It's a different position in the water. You float a lot. Mm -hmm. So, and over 20, now it's uh you cannot use it oh wow okay so what was the temperature in tokyo tokyo temperature was our biggest challenge uh we started the race with 29.3 oh wow really hot mm. really really hot and we finished the race with 30.3 we have also in fina rules the 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 temperature the highest temperature is 31. Oh. if it's 31 the race doesn't start so you have to, to wait until uh, you have um, good conditions. But it starts at 29 and finish at 30.3. That's why we start 6.30 a.m. in the morning. We uh, wake up like 2.45 in the village to, to have breakfast at 3 a.m. in the morning. Wow. And then call in room, the whole stuff, you know, put the suit, uh, um, final briefing, and uh, that's it. So that's why we start so early. It's because of the temperature. Wow, that's incredible. Now, I guess this is where um, kind of food and drink during the race also plays a big factor. I mean, you're going to have to drink fluid. But when it's that hot, you, you can't possibly get through two hours without drinking a lot of water. And then tell me, 
why, why the food? Where does it come into play? How do you factor it in? It's 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 another thing that's amazing of open water. Like, look at the circuit in, in, in Tokyo. It's seven laps. So seven laps with, with 1.43, something like this, less than 1,500. Mm-hmm. Um, so y- you can decide yourself when to drink, when to stop to drink. You, we, we, we train, including the, the movement. You know, she, she never stopped to drink. She, she continued drinking, swimming backstroke, mm-hmm. and then looking to the, to the pack if the pack are going away. And then hearing some instruction instructions from from me, uh, it's it's a nice moment. It's like a pit stop in in a in a car races, you know, in Formula One. Um, but uh, it's part of, of the strategy, especially in a hot water. We calculate. I said we because it's me, the, the our physician, our doctor, our nutritionist. We calculate exactly how much salt she needs to you know not be dehydrated dehydrated mm. during the race and uh, in the end what's was so good that she arrived you know well hydrated and and she did the um, anti-doping test and we saw she was really hydrated so um we, we calculate exactly how much salt we we have to put with carbo with uh you know sugar with um it, hydrolytics. Mm. It's a, you, you said something interesting there too that you you train for these movements. So, do you do the majority of your training in the pool? Do you do some in the open water? And then where do you do the practicing of the drinking and the eating? How do you do those? You know, with with the juniors, we we used to train outside. I mean, we, we live in Brazil. We have a one of the biggest coasts with the nice water and nice beaches and. Right. You know, lakes and, and everything. But I used to do that with the juniors because they need to to understand how how much important it is during the race, you know, to know how to where where to sprint. We we do like 25 meters sprint just to take the, the bottle and take your, your feeding uh before your your compet your opponents, and then you can see them doing, and then you can go with them in front of the pack. Mm. So it's it's many many details that we used to train with the with the juniors, but with Dana, she knows we, we train ninety nine percent of our our program in the pool mm. to control to control frequency of strokes, weight to swim, technique. Um, that's that's one of those the points that I I believe she improved a lot. Her technique in the two thousand eleven two thousand twelve was like. 39 40 41 you know cycles per per per, per minute uh, the frequency of strokes now she swim the beginning of the race with 32 31 it's like less strokes less energy saving energy um but uh, we we train those points in in more competition more uh regional competitions here if we have uh our nationals for example is not that not that strong, especially for Anna. We can use that competition to train those details. Yeah, awesome. Um, I just did a uh, a podcast with um, uh, uh, who, who was it? Uh, Ari- Ariana Titmus. Ariana Titmus. Yes, yes. And um, I said something similar to her that I'm going to say to you about Anna uh, Marcella is is that um, there's nothing physically that stands out that jumps out but what i understand about her is the mental uh side of it i mean she is a lion she's as strong as any woman that i've ever met um and she reminds me a lot of ariane titmus in terms of just the way her ferociousness let's say and her belief in herself and her her mental capacity talk to me about her mental strength and uh, the difference that you see in her and, and other women I believe that Anna passed through, you know, a lot of difficulties in, in her life since the beginning. I mean, she 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 came from a, a poor family. She she needed to uh, to work to to pay the bus to go to the training session. It's like um, it it's it's not like we used to see in U.S. or in Europe. Like the you know they all have cars, they can go. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
walking. They have uh, facilities everywhere. So she has to fight since the beginning, and she passed through difficult times. I mean, not only economically, but uh, you know, moving from uh, his family to Sao Paulo to to get better clubs and better facilities, better coaches, and then she was out of everyone that saw Anna in Beijing 2008. You know, in the first Olympics of of, of open water, 15 year old arriving fifth. So, you know, everyone was expecting Anna in in London, and then she was 11. She she tried to won that race, but not a good strategy in that moment. Hot water again in mm. Shanghai, and then she's out, and then she had you know, um, it's it's in English it's hard to say. It's it's a sickness. It's um, mm -hmm. autoimmunis. Right. Uh, um, what she had, mean, yeah. yeah, she has to take, uh, you know, make a surgery out of the pool. And then we, we have problems with the club, with the sponsors that uh, we worked together 2013, 14, and 15. And then we had to, you know, uh, broke for a while. And then she compete bad again in Rio 10. And then we, we back to work together in 2017, eight, eight weeks before World Champs was, was insane to, to put her in, in, in shape, in form. So those difficulties, I believe that uh, makes Anna more and more strained. Mm. Every time that she passed through something difficult, she come back, you know, more, more and more stronger. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable. And uh, one thing that I said, I was talking, well, uh, with Bruno. Bruno mm -hmm. And uh, I said to him, uh, I believe she won that race the day before. Uh, we used to do that. It's like our, how can I say that? It's something that we, we, we do believe. We, 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 do not, we, we do not discuss the race in the day of the race. Right. So we, the day before, we see it, you know, in, in in Tokyo was in a in the grass under under a nice tree and we start to to talk about each opponent our strategy but um, something that I said I said Anna you don't need to pass through something hard to become stronger you are already stronger you are already you have already everything that you need inside you just put it out I mean mm -hmm. just go there and want that medal and she looked at me and said if anyone wants to beat me they need to swim a lot because this time is not going to happen i said oh man it gives me chills i think about that conversation you know it's uh, it's uh it was it was really amazing and then we start to 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 remember every single world, uh, world championship race that we did like 2013 why we 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 did not won the 10 k's we were sil silver medal okay what, what was our mistake? Okay, we, we give the Poliana, for example, the chance to be in your feet. And then in the last meters, you open to the left and she was breathing less than you. You were looking for the touch pad too much. So you don't need to look the touch pad too much. You know how many strokes you need to arrive at the touch pad. So that was our, uh, our mistake. Okay, let's go to Kazan. Why we, we didn't want in Kazan the 10 case? Okay, uh, Sharon goes in front with Oheli, and you realize that just uh, it was too late. So okay, you you have to be in front of the pack. You you cannot realize that someone is going out of the pack too late, otherwise you're gonna miss it. Okay, Budapest, and we did every single ra important race, you know, with those with the same opponents because one one statistic thing that uh, people can 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 use us in open water is. The females race was the oldest race in in in, uh, in aquatics. Mm. I mean, Anna is twenty nine. Haley, I believe Haley is 30, 30 already. Mm -hmm. uh, Ashley is thirty two. Uh, Hakeli Bruni thirty one. We we have you know old ladies that know themselves, that know each other, right? And uh, they know how to compete against them, and. Um, it's it's very it's a very strategic race. You right. know? That's, that's why we we talk like an hour the day before, and uh, I I go to my room in the in the village. I said, 
man, I don't need to to do anything else. She's she's really ready. Wow. And uh, well, ten minutes before the calling room, the final calling room, I said, "You have any doubts?" And she said, "Nope." I said, "Let's do it." <laughs> That's incredible. What about during the race? When was the moment for you where you thought to yourself, like truly thought, this is it. It's it's over. She's done. It's she's winning this race. Well, it was after the fourth lap. We 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 had a strategy to to feed ourselves in the second, fourth, and fifth lap. Right. It's 1.5 liter and um with the quantity exactly quantity that we need to 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 feed and after the fourth race fourth lap i said um try to swim a little bit slower go go a little bit back you know not in front lot first or second go fourth or fifth because you 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 will have 500 milliliters again to drink and mm. sometimes you know in the sea the body just don't accepted that right so and and also the taste the taste is horrible sorry to say but the taste of uh carbo with salt with it, it's just horrible mm. but i mean it's what she needs to 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 that moment to especially to a 29 degree water and uh she goes back start to swim with 31 of frequency and no one can just you know open five or ten meters I said, come on. They they know that she, she's not in front. They know that it's an opportunity and no one can know can open like more than five meters. She's she was swimming very very you know slowly for our our very pace. Comfortable. Very comfortable. So she, she's gonna make it. And then the second moment I believe was uh when Sharon goes to, to her feet because we predicted that also. We we he said, Sharon, we'll go to your feet in the end of the race, especially because one month uh, before we competed together in the Spanish Nationals. Mm. And uh, she needs open space to sprint. Uh, this is a, another detail of technique. Some, some athletes can sprint with the two or three athletes close to, mm -hmm. to them. And some athletes need more space to put uh, his or her technique uh, uh, better technique to sprint. Mm -hmm. Sharon is one of those athletes. She needs a space. And then when when Anna realized that Sharon tried to go out of the pack three times, always on her left side, because she knows that Anna breathed to the right side. Right. So yeah, well, it's, it, it's part of the game. And those three times, Anna was really concentrated and realized that, and then move, move forward, you know, um faster and then faster Sharon cannot pass her and go back to the pack i said one time okay two times three times she cannot pass no way man no one no one gonna pass her so this uh this is a what within the last um 1500 where it was like okay this is it she's yeah, in the like, lead she's, she's staying there she, the, the last yeah I think last six, seven hundred meters, she was she was already in front. Wow! Now, how close are you at this stage? Where you're coming down to the final stretch? How close are you allowed to be to the athletes? How much communication do you have in the final stretch? During during the the feeding, we we can really communicate ourselves. I I, I used to say you are swimming with thirty one of frequency, nice technique, stay there, mm -hmm. uh, use our plan A. We 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 used to. To make, of course, a plan A, plan B. If someone do something different, you have to change your strategy. You cannot put your own strategy uh, in in March. So we we, we can talk during the, the, the feeding, but then, uh, especially now in Japan in Tokyo, it was a, was a really show of images. You know, they have cameras on the boat, cameras and the and the drones, mm. cameras and a um, um, a cable. What's so and, and passing and all those cameras showing to the public. There's no public. We were the public, but uh, in uh, big screams, you know, it's mm -hmm. uh, we can we can really see all the race. And then the last 500 meters, they they came from the last buoy to the touchpad, and in our direction. So we can we can walk 
close to them. There, uh, the, there was two coaches from Australia. They were in the television with the famous yellow T-shirt uh, mm -hmm. of Australia, you know, walking and cheering for, for the third place for Karina Lee. And uh, I was right in front of them. So walking and seeing the race, I said, man, if, if, if she tried three times and it was not possible, she's not going to pass her and we, we're going to want. And, and it was funny. Well, just stories. Huh? Um, I passed right in front of the Italian coaches, uh, Fabrizio and Stefano, and both of them speak Portuguese very well. Mm. And they say, how is your heart? Like, you come down, come down. I said, I'm, I'm really... I'm really fine. I, I know what's going to happen. I mean, I was really confident. <laughs> what about, I mean, the, the emotions? I, I know what you're going through at that point in time, uh, having been part of the Brazilian team and, and being part of a gold medal in 2008. The significance of it hits you at some point, you know, the, the realization that this is a big deal. I mean, the first Olympic gold medal in swimming for, for a woman, um, And, and the significance is huge for you as, uh, as a born and bred Brazilian Olympic coach. I mean, this is huge. This is as big as it gets. When does it start to really sink in for you, the significance of what you've done? Man, really takes me like two days, you know. I, I, I saw, you know, our, our doctor, our friends of Olympic committee saying, you want to go matter, you are Olympic champion. I say, okay, 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 it's fine. Okay, we, we came here to, to do that. But I, I didn't realize, you know, what, what we did. It's like, a, like you said, it's, it's, a, it's a Brazilian swimmer, uh, coached by a Brazilian coach. We, we never leave the country, you know, in this, from mm -hmm. 2017 to until now. So we, we, We're still working here in, in Rio, in what we can call it our legacy of the, our our games, you know, in Maria Link, in, in, in our pool, in our country. It's like, it's uh, it takes me two days to 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 realize what we what we did, but I I don't know. It's was the, the most special part was with my kids. You know, I have two two beautiful girls, nine and seven, and when they Well, it, now it, it hits me when they they take the medal and look and say, "Hey, Dad, I want to do a sport." So this this for me, it's 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 a matter of things, you know. I do. I, I travel a lot. I stay out of home, but I'm inspiring them. You know, I can I can see in her faces they they were really proud of me. So, man, this is the damn man. You make me cry. <laughs> no, I mean, I, no, it's it's it's. It's really amazing, and and guess what? They they probably will start to swim, <laughs> both of them. <laughs> well, there's a lot a lot of work to be done. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms of the work, um, I mean, it's enormous, right? The the work that you put in, it it must have a personal cost too. The amount of work that you put in personally, there there has to be some sort of personal cost to that. It it's a lot of time and dedication, I would imagine, to to coach any swimmer, any athlete, but a, but a marathon swimmer, the amount of time personally that goes into that, there has to be some cost to that, is there? It's a huge cost. I mean, I, I used to say when I do some, you know, clinics for, for FINA or for the Olympic Committee, I used to say that I pay a really high price, you know, a really mm -hmm. high price. It's, it's, a, it's a huge cost. I, I remember... I was talking to you about strategy in, in 2014. Mm -hmm. 2014, I stayed 180 days out of home and was the year where my my youngest kid just born. Wow. I mean, she's she's seven now. I I didn't saw her growing up. Wow. It's it's something that you know I will ever remember that. But the, the point is is it's you, you have to choose. You have to choose. You cannot work like in that level. What we were talking about swimming in that level, we can without paying the price. I mean, athletes paying the price. You, you are with them. You, you, me, especially in open water. We are, you know, almost Batman and Robin. It's like it's like uh, uh, we we do everything together. We we travel together. We get experience together. So. 
you you have to pay the price and it's a high price but when the results come it's just pays off like hard work pays off that's it for sure for sure um talk to me quickly then about what what the work looks like you know just in terms of people trying to get their head around the weekly schedule maybe the monthly schedule that that anima seller puts in what is the work look like per week uh, usually we 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 do 10 sessions per week um and the average of um, kilometers per week it's like 80 75 80 it's not that much um also because she she's already 29 it's not a it's not a kid anymore she needs more time to recover uh, but uh, I like to put, uh, well, we, we do gym, we do um, dry land part like four times a week. Uh, mm, interesting. You, you, usually it's like a, two sessions on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, one session Wednesday and Saturday, Sunday is off, and uh, we do the, the, the dry land part, the gym, and the same days of the, the double training. And then uh, Wednesday is like broke in a... Um, in a weekend so we do you know recover physiotherapy heart training session but just one you know afternoon off and um but i like to some stimulus that uh, for me always work especially with the endurance athletes uh, long distance athletes it's an altitude camp mm. it's not that i i love to be in altitude camp it's 21 days out of out of home out of your family, but really, really works and put athletes in a, in a, in a different level. Especially Where do you go to for that? I like Flagstaff in Arizona. Flagstaff, and, yeah. But my 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 preference is it's always Sierra Nevada in Spain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the altitude two thousand three hundred. It's really good. I mean, the facility you 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 don't need to go outside for nothing. You just eat, train sleep and repeat and that's it you speak uh, spanish too so that helps a lot <laughs> it helps a lot <laughs> and uh in 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 altitude camps we do a little bit more we go for 11 sessions per week or 12 sessions per week to arrive at 90 or sometimes 100 case in a week which is normal for open waters do you time that particularly before an event like certain when when do you put it into your program or in the beginning of the season uh, we are we are in South America, so our season starts in January. It's it's completely different. It's it's something that I try to adapt to um, the calendar of uh, Europe and the United States because you you finish your season like in in August and then starts again in September October. We finish our season in December with the uh, national championships, including, and uh, we restart in January. So I like to put altitude camps in the beginning of the season or before a very important competition. In those like eight years that I worked with Anna, was the first time this year I wait, I wait. I, I, I saw a lot of people doing that in 2019, two altitude camps in the same season. Some, some coaches like to do two, two, three or four, but we always do just one, you know, because it's, it costs you, it's an impact to you, to the body. It's right. not it's not so easy to absorb, especially when you are getting older. So we in 2019, I remember we did one in the beginning of the season in January, and then I saw a lot of coaches saying to me, so you're not gonna do before Guangzhou. No, I I would try to get good results in Guangzhou without an altitude camp because I want to use two in the uh, in Olympic year. Mm. So that's what we did this year. We did one in January to put ourselves in shape again and form again after a vacation. And then we did one right before Olympics. Listen, uh, Bruno is over 30 now and um, he's looking to go to Paris, but he's swimming 1500 meters a day. You know, it's, <laughs> it's like your warm up. How much more can she do? How, how much longer do you think she can do this for at this top level with the years that she's put in, like you said, she's been doing this since 14, 15 years old. I mean, this is half her life now she, where she's she been was, she in Beijing. Pool. It's humble. She was in she was competing in Beijing. That's crazy. And she, and she won her first medal now. Like wow. I mean, that's wild. But like, is Paris something that you're absolutely gonna be doing? Yeah, 
yeah, we will go. We we have a plan together. I I I think I can say to everyone because we it's it's not a a closed plan. It's a it's an open plan. We want to we want to go and, and to Paris. I in Paris you will be 32, mm -hmm. uh, like Bruno and mm -hmm. uh, like Bruno today. I mean, and uh, and Poliana, for example, won the the third the third place, the bronze medal in Rio. She was 33, uh, in, in that that moment. So it's it's not that old for open water. So we will go into Tokyo, and to Tokyo, sorry, into uh, uh, Paris. Mm -hmm competing in high level and then from Paris to LA she will be outside of the pool as an assistant as my assistant coach and then in 2028 I can retire myself give my chronos to her and say it's it's your turn <laughs> ah, ah there we go she, 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 she finished she finished the 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 university like we call it here in Brazil physical education uh -huh. so she finished the university and then We'll do four years together, working together as a coach, a head coach, and assistant coach. And okay. then 2028, my kids will be 16 and 14. I can just put my focus on them. And the, that's wow, it. that's amazing. It's still a plan. I, we never know, but this is our plan. It sounds like you have a good, close relationship. How has it developed from when she was a kid to now she's a grown woman and, and obviously evolving? Uh, How has that relationship changed over time? It's re it's really nice because it's it looks like another another kid. I mean, another daughter. I have two. I have uh, Anna is my third, or the yeah, older right. one, but is my third. Sometimes I have to be, um, you know, serious. Sometimes I have to be, you know, just listen, uh, mm -hmm. listen her. But it's 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 close to be a family relationship. You know, we we pass most of our times together. If, if we don't have a good relationship, it's just impossible. I mean, imagine this year, uh, I, I'm arriving today at home after 76 days out of home. Oh, God. <laughs> we, we leave Brazil 7th of June to go to Italian nationals and then uh, Spanish nationals, altitude camp, uh, um, Tokyo, and then our nationals in the pool. And so it's like 76 days out of home, you know, sharing the same, the same dream, sharing the same goals. So right. we are really good, good friends. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, well, yeah, there's no other way. <laughs> you there's, better no be other better. way. <laughs> there's no other way. But listen, what about in terms of just the reception back home? Hopefully, there's, I'm sure there's a huge financial cost as well. Is, is she now able to get some recognition and maybe get some sponsorships that are going to help her and you go to the next uh you know olympics yeah, yeah i'm really really happy of, of that because we, we never know we we do that for our our passion our you know our goals to to, to get that medal that was the only one that she she doesn't have but uh yeah they not only the, the olympic committee you know a, a lot of uh uh, companies and sponsors clubs they they are really I, I can give you an example i work for the olympic committee i don't have a club mm -hmm. and uh, here in brazil you know that uh, we have a um, it's it's not an economic thing but it's a it's a thing that really touched me like uh, being recognized i we we, we have a, a huge our huge passion in brazil is football it's right. a yo know, it's the soccer in america it's our football and, uh, you know, one of the clubs here, Flamengo, it's a club of Rio. They made a T-shirt with my name and the, and the, and this year, the number of this year where we, we get that goat, you know, just to give to me. I said, listen, you did something great. I know that you cheer in football for other club, but we from Flamengo, we like to recognize you. We made wow. this T-shirt for you. It's, it's, it's just a detail, but it's it really, it's really nice, you know, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's happening. The thing it's uh, right, like I said, we never know, but it's happening. People are are really investing, you know, sponsors. Uh, of course, we that's a, a, another kind of um, a different kind of cost in time because we have to train in nine months. We have Fukuoka. We have a uh, another World Champs in nine months in in May. What is going to be in May? So. How much time do you need? You think to to have a great preparation? Is it is it six months or do you need nine months? 
No, no, six months is fine. Six months. Fine. Yeah, it's okay. fine. Um, all right, yeah. great. Well, so so she's on a little bit of a break right now. Yeah, she she had two weeks. Come on, coach. Break. Come on, give her give us some time off, coach. Two weeks, man. Two weeks is two weeks. nice. You <laughs> animal. <laughs> she come back today. She come back today. Oh my god. First session was this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's already done. Okay, it's in the books. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh man, uh, listen, Fernando, I've really enjoyed shining a light on you and the work that you've done, man. I think it's it's great that the world can recognize you now. And uh um you d you did mention earlier before we got on air the significance of the painting behind you. Talk to me about the painting behind you. Well, it's I, I think we we were we were talking about the, the pay uh the price we pay. I mean, right. the, the, the price we pay to do to to work in a high level, and uh, I didn't have much time to to be with with my family. This this painting that was my mom who made it, and my mom passed away like ten months ago, and I, I I do have to continue because life doesn't stop, you know. Uh, but it, it's it means a lot to me, not only about religion but about my mom made it and made it for me so i bring it to me and i beautiful man be here yeah well sorry about your mom but i'm glad we could showcase that today and and, and she's also happy. wherever wherever she she is she is she is really happy for me oh for sure no doubt no doubt um congratulations again um keep up the good work good luck for the next few years a lot of work to do again but uh, enjoy this success okay okay thank you thank you all right thanks fernando take care man Thanks a lot. Bye.